This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, miniatures, and paints, discount prices at miniaturemarket.com. Hey everybody, it's your old pal Rob. Today we are going to be taking a look at Final Girl version 2. Now, I have a lot of bling stuff in here, so um, uh, I, I wanted to show you. But what I wanted to show you was one of the expansions for it, or, or uh, movie premises. It's Panic at Station 2891. Um, I'm a big fan of the thing. Um, and I'm going to talk more about this. Um, and this has everything that you can expect and more in it. Uh, you're going to get two girls with this that are just uh, glorious in their own right. Uh, and uh, we're going to go down to the table and take a look at that right now. So I'm not going to explain all the rules and everything like that. But I am going to kind of just give you a, a, an overview of this. Because um, when I got my five um, storylines in... Um, from volume two, uh, I was automatically attracted to this one because I am a huge fan of the movie, The Thing, which uh, has has always been one of my favorites of all time. Uh, I like the, the very old one, of course, with the, um, from uh, the Howard Hawks one, but the, the one with, you know, the, the very rarely do they do a sequel that really um, encompasses or improves on things and when they did the Kurt Russell one of course this was one of the best now if you're watching this th there are a million videos on how to play Final Girl I want to show you some of the differences here now th first of all this mat does not come with the game you're gonna get this board and this board but you gotta have the the final game core set to play which is going to bring you a couple of other boards that will have a board with this uh, and then all the basic cards along with the starting cards and of course the dice now what's going to happen here is that you are going to be going through the station and you're going to be trying to test these individuals one of them is the organism or it could be more than one of them okay you're going to try to discover and you're going to be trying to pick up these test kits in the lab you get to test for free but you're going to be able to go to certain areas and purchase or, or basically search for these test kits just like the movie and what you're going to do is you're going to go up and you are going to test um to test one of the the meeples and it's the different color meeples these are still victims but you'll turn it over and uh oh you found it all right so what you're going to do is you would turn over this card and it would be that is who your final boss would be and then you would turn this over and this would go into this slot here and then of course you would add this in and you would do as it does as you were pulling the tarot cards if you ever run out of tarot cards you're going to pretty much lose the game um, you have to try to survive and not die um, there are a couple different uh, scenarios especially with the different players you have two different players you have Kate and Uki, uh, Yuki um, and what is going to happen with Kate She's trying to get a bunch of um, uh, a bunch of survivors onto the copter and off to power herself up. It's a little different different way to do certain things. And then um, Uki's got a different thing. And once you uh, uh, complete that, you are going to get their special power, which is going to make them more powerful. Uh, as you can see, uh, Kate only has four health. Yuki has uh, six. And what you're going to be doing, of course, is you're going to be trying to, to go through and use your cards to kind of move around here. Like, for instance, you're going to play this card, and depending on where you are on the horror track, because this is going to move up and down, you're going to roll a certain amount of die. Now, I rolled two ones there, which is kind of typical. So I would have failed. I would have lost some time. Time is how you're going to pay for these cards. Again, like I said, a lot of this you already know. The differences are, are, are how you're going to play through. You're going to have these different organisms that you're going to face. One is easier than a couple of the others. Um, you're going to be dealing, if they go outside, with frostbite. 
Frostbite is another way that you can actually lose a, a, um, a, a victim. Now, the minute they go out, they're going to get the Frostbite, but it isn't until you can pull a card that will have another Frostbite on it that you're going to lose them. One of the things that people uh, um, have been messing up with the rules is that what will happen is at the beginning of the upkeep, they do Frostbite and then they do it again and lose the victim. No, it's not until um, you pull another card that's going to cause that. So that, that's a rule that you need to know. Um, you're going to, you could be testing these guys and like I said, you're on a timer and you can run in to save people or you can have somebody assimilated, which isn't cool. You're going to be spending these cards and as you spend these cards, um, there are going to be certain things that you're going to do. Stars are successes. So the more stars that you get, that's great. And then here you have two cards. If you discard two cards, you'll get one star. You kind of want it because losing health and losing time is going to mess you up because the more time that you lose the less money which at the end of your turn when you decide to stop your turn you're not going to be able to purchase certain cards you're going to start with a hand of a bunch of cards that have zero cost but once you use them for that turn they are put aside for a whole turn and basically they have to refresh and then you can grab them so you need to, to balance your time Make sure that you have enough dice and try to get the horror track so you can get the three dice, which is always helpful because it makes it easier. Oh, there you go, uh, a success, which is going to make things easier. And there are certain cards that are going to help you increase this, but there's going to be tarot cards that are going to help you make you lose die. I mean, you can end up just rolling one die. Oh, now I roll a, a star, right? The miniatures are absolutely beautiful for this, and you're going to buy that in a separate um, thing. I bought the Series 2 miniatures, I have the Series 1 miniatures, and I blinged this out. But you can just play this as simple by just getting the core box and the story box. You don't have to go crazy, but, you know, as you can see, I, I like to have, you know, my, my thing as miniatures, and I like to have my creatures as creatures of course and there's three different types of creatures as you can see they're all creepy and disgusting and this guy i think is the easiest guy out of all of them as well as the two characters as you see you got the dog with this one because you you also are going to be able to get dog with you that would come as a partner to protect you the different cards the events all the different things that you can do as i said <clears throat> you want to try to get try to escape these particular miniatures and 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 on this this is actually a really cool mechanism that i really like is that once you got your meeples there well they're going to take off and after each turn you're going to have to try to either get a card or you're going to try to get them to fly faster and well if you have two dice well can i get them to fly faster yes i can and if i discarded two cards that would move this up too which means that they would make it to the arctic airport and then i could put them on on kate and you get certain abilities. And remember, if you fill this all up, you're gonna be able to turn over and get the special ability. This one very much feels like the thing. It has the tension of the thing because you don't know which one is going to be there. And every time you start to plan things, they panic and they move because they're still victims until you expose them and they become assimilated. Um, very, very, very well done beautifully done you want to bling this out uh, i you know and and also for the you know for like the shed and the uh the um the helicopter there is another pack which is very cheap i think it was only 10 bucks that i was able to get that from and i was able to even paint the vehicles so you have one that is just all the figures one that is the vehicles then you have the mats and um, if you are able to win and somehow defeat, you have this thing that says, hey, for Kitty's eyes only. And then there's another one in there for Uki, um, Yuki. Um, and you'll be able to open this up and find out. I don't, I have not been able to open this up. Do not open until you have survived a game with Kate. Well, that, I don't think that'll ever get open, to be honest. But hey. We'll give it a we'll give it a good go, and this is just just a great great game, and I really really like 
the thing feel to it. There are four other we're going to be taking a look at, and as I take a look at them, I will paint them up and um, show you the video. Uh, the um, um, I'll do a video and break down each one. Um, but if you are a fan of Final Girl 1, they really outdid themselves at, with Final Girl 2. So let's go up top and get my final thoughts, which is pretty obvious by what, I, what I'm saying here. But um, we'll talk a little bit more about this up top. Now there's a million videos out for this, and with good reason. Uh, Van Ryder always makes some fantastic and wonderful games. They have done a fantastic job. And, uh, it, it, you know, they know who to back uh, as far as channels are concerned to, to really get the message across on how great this game is. I wanted to show this because how much I do love it. Um, you know, I went out and I bought everything I could for it uh, at our local game store, Brown uh, Bearded Brown Coat. Uh, they have one in Bellevue and they have one uh, in Ocala. Definitely, if you are in Florida, you want to stop by and take a look at that. And as a matter of fact, they're going to be at Recon uh, in the coming weekend. Um, I believe the 27th, 28th, 29th. Uh, so stop by there and say hi to them if you happen to be at Recon. Um, this is just masterful. Um, you know, I, the, the bling stuff, you can play with meeples. I hate meeples. I, hate, I really do. I just think... Meeples are, are, are a lazy version. It's more of a Euro thing for Meeples. And it's understandable, keep costs down. But I always like when you can have miniatures and get that real feel. And buying the, the uh, Volume 2 uh, miniature pack was well worth it for me. Uh, it's affordable, the miniatures are beautiful. I, I had fun painting them and then adding them into the entire um, um, set here as I tried to play this and get slaughtered. Um, but I, I, you can't stop playing it. That's the beauty of it. It's just that good. And if it wasn't for my good friend Kabuki, who said, oh, you know, you need to try Final Girl. It's the, one of the best solo games I've ever checked out. Um, I never would have looked at it. And I'm so glad I did um, because it is one of my favorite solo games of all time. And it really just stands out. It's just a fantastic experience. And it just keeps on be getting better. You've got 10 different um, ten different scenarios here that are, are fantastic with Volume 1 and Volume 2. And, you know, you can interchange the girls, which is just a lot of fun. It's not easy, so there's a lot of playability. And you get your money's worth out of it. And that's what's most important. I highly, highly suggest you pick it up. Now you cannot play any of these expansions without the core system. Make sure you get that. That big map doesn't come with it. The figures don't come with it. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I clarified that. So go out, pick this up. You won't be disappointed. Fantastic, fantastic game. Until next time, it's your old pal Rob. We'll see you soon, everybody.